What is up, y'all? Welcome back to Return Refuge Farm. I've been doing the silliest thing the last few days. Every year I have to do this, and I get on to myself. I'm like, Jessica, do this differently. Why? Why are you this way? I'm going through every drawer, like junk drawer, nook, cranny, clutter collection area. These places aren't intentional. They just happen. To find the seeds that I saved last year, because every year... I put seeds in Ziploc baggies and then tuck them in places they shouldn't go. And so the following year at seed starting time, I have to go like collect them from the places I've been seeing them for the entire year. And this has been going on for a long time. Like I've been gardening for a while. Aha, this is what I was looking for. The silver slicer cucumber. I actually pulled this out of my junk drawer that was in my kitchen yesterday, put it on the counter. And then my kids when cleaning the kitchen, stuck it on my desk and I'm like, no. <laughs> another cluttery place I'll never find it <laughs> one day I will have order in my my life my home but not today oh wow look at this I didn't know this bloomed I don't even know what it is I just bought it because it was variegated it's beautiful so yesterday the cool weather came back I had to close the greenhouse up last night because it was 40 um, Fahrenheit, 4 Celsius this morning. I'm not about that. I don't really like that. Thankfully, I really hadn't planted anything out that it would make a difference to. Tomatoes would be fine getting that cold, but peppers, had they been planted out, would probably be a little fussy. They can get stunted uh, being in cold temps like that. Mine are still in the greenhouse because all my seedlings have been a little bit puny this year and um, I just left them in longer to be able to give them some more, I guess, baby. And I think that they're, I mean, some of them are still kind of fussy looking, but a lot of them are perking up. And I think once I put them out in the ground, it'll end up being okay. I'm going to wait at least one more day uh, because it is going to get cold again tonight. I've got a bunch of irises here that some of these are going into my garden. I've got four different types. And uh, some of them, I think I'm just going to take up to the farmer's market, what's extra, and sell them, pot them up. This Thursday, we have farmer's market. It's the second and the fourth Thursday of every month, if you guys are local and ever want to join us, um, 4 to 8 in the evening at the corner of Fulmer Street and Lexington Avenue in Batesburg, South Carolina. And this week, I do have my own booth there. Uh, we are swapping seeds again. I'm bringing seeds to share. And then also, I'll have some things for sale. I've got some plants because my plants got kind of puny. I'm not taking a whole lot up there. But I do have some plants. And then the irises that I was going to take. As well as like books and merch and stuff like that. Look at that beautiful blue sky. And green garden. I had a lot of comments the last week about how this garden just exploded uh just seemingly overnight and i agree that's kind of how it goes every year i'm always just holding on for spring to come because as soon as it comes it comes with a vengeance just even daily uh yesterday it rained a lot so i wasn't out here very much i was mostly in the house but the day before yesterday this rose had one flower open and look at it now isn't that crazy? Just in 48 hours, what a difference can be made. Same thing like these Baptisias here. You see this? I mean, it was just like maybe two or three weeks ago I was exclaiming when I saw this popping out of the ground. And look at it now. Isn't that amazing? It's like up to my chest. It's wild. This is Proven Winners Strawberry Lemonade Baptisia. And see how it goes from pink to yellow on the same stem. Isn't that incredible? This is one of my favorite plants in the cottage garden. Here's the chamomile. Looking lovely. So far I haven't done a big chamomile harvest. But anytime you have anything flowering. You do want to pick the flowers off regularly. So they'll produce more. So I've done some small harvesting. Um, actually what I'll do while I'm out here working is I'll pick enough flowers, take them and immediately I'll put them in a mug, uh, in a strainer, pour some hot water over it and then let it steep for about five minutes, pull it out, add some honey and have a really fresh chamomile tea, which is lovely. I actually had to look at my garden plant and this is where the silver slicer is going this year, right here. 
I don't know if my camera will be able to pick it up, but I'm hoping y'all can hear this sound. I don't know, there's a motor going in the background with the four-wheeler. Um, the cicadas are emerging here in the Midlands of South Carolina, and there is this thrumming hum that is just constant right now. It's it, it's actually less loud today than it was day before yesterday before the th we had a lot of thunderstorms yesterday and that I guess that settled them down but the day before that it was chilling like it was the most unnerving sound. I don't know how I don't know it just was very chilling is the best word I have for it. Um, totally weird feeling to come outside and just have this like frequency sound being released that you're not used to being I don't know and then of course they're everywhere like I was milking goats and I have these cicadas flying into my hair when it comes to flying bugs I'm actually not as heebie-jeebie as I am about like the soft-bodied things that live in the soil I'm actually not a fan of the things in the soil like when I'm digging potatoes it makes my skin crawl I mean I, I just suck it up and deal with it because I'm a gardener but I don't love it uh, but the flying bugs I still don't like it when they're flying into my hair so I'm like out there milking and being attacked by cicadas and then they're everywhere and of course the kids are coming up with the little shells all over their body because they're finding them all over and sticking them to their clothes mm. all right silver slicer cucumber seeds going in um with these i'm gonna sow quite a few along the line um my hope is to have three plants at the bottom of this trellis roughly evenly spaced um, so I'll thin out what comes up. Last year I dealt, see there's little seedlings coming up here, which these are totally volunteers. And I am guessing that these are, um, Kajari melons because that's what was here last year. I'm pulling them up. I'm planting those on a different trellis this year. Anyway, last year I struggled with hill bugs eating my seedlings. Every time I say that, somebody in my comment section argues with me and says, you're spreading misinformation about pill bugs. They don't eat seedlings. And you can say what you want. I, I, I watched pill bugs eat my seedlings. I had tons and tons of them. And when I shared about it, I had a lot of other people share that they also experienced the same thing. Either way, I learned a trick last year a little too late to be of use to me. Last year I had a really hard time getting much of a cucumber harvest because you really got to get them going early enough here that they produce a lot before it gets super hot and they get super bitter. But um, I was told to cut a potato in half and put it cut side down in the bed next to your seedlings and that any pill bugs or roly polies would eat that instead. And so I'm going to do that this year. I'm not going to do it today. Um, I'm going to wait until they start coming up and I am going to definitely try the cut potato trick and hopefully my seedlings will be able to get established and then I'll be able to get a good cucumber harvest this year. I had such a poor cucumber harvest last year. It wasn't a huge deal because I usually store enough food when it comes to things like pickles, that it'll last me two years. Basically, I'll have two years worth of stuff. The next year, if I have a good harvest, I'll go ahead and put more up, um, and then I'll give some away, or I'll just have extra. Last year, with such a bad harvest, I went through a lot of what I had stored, so I really need a good cucumber harvest this year. These are seeds I saved from the Silver Slicer Cucumber. I've been singing the praises of this cucumber since the first time I ever grew it. Um, it is, there's another one apparently that's like a, like close to this one called Salt and Pepper, which is a smaller version, but this is a white cucumber. And in my experience, I originally got the seeds from Hudson Valley Seed Co. In my experience, this is one of the best cucumbers you can possibly grow if you live in the South because it does not get bitter and the skin does not get that really tough, bitter taste that a lot of times cucumbers get when it gets hot. And it's super prolific. I mean, I have consistently, on good years, not last year, on good years, I have consistently harvested like multiple five gallon buckets of cucumbers off of one arch trellis that has three plants on each side. Look at this. This is my bronze fennel and it actually came back. 
last year. I did not replant this. It came back. That's very exciting. Uh, over here in this bed, all of this is our mulch, which is our pond vegetation. But I'm pretty sure that this popping up, yeah, this is my Jerusalem artichoke. That's the first one I see coming up through the mulch. Oh, yeah, there's another one right there. Poke him a little hole. I didn't really plan on sowing these seeds today, but it rained yesterday. The soil's nice and damp, and although it's going to be chilly tonight. Oh, come on, little bee. Oh, I'm going to open this up. A carpenter bee just went in the greenhouse. I don't want to be back. It's fine. It's slightly chilly today, but it's getting sunny, so it is getting warm in there. Right here, I'm going to do red noodle beans on both sides of this trellis. All right, here are my seeds. Now when I'm sowing noodle beans or any beans on the bottom of a trellis, I want, I typically will put one seed at the bottom of each of the little metal things. Now, this is a cattle panel and, or a livestock panel, which means the bottom of the panel, they're a little closer together. It's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, more or less, you're, you're spacing these about every four inches apart. Um, I get asked a lot about cattle panels. Do I sew on the inside or the outside? I like to do my cattle panel trellises like this where I have a little bit of space between the panel and the bed. Some people butt them up right against the bed. There's not a wrong way to do this and it's really going to just come down to some preferences. I'm 5'5 five five, um, and my beds are 24 inches tall which by spacing them out a little bit more it brings the top of my panel down some. If I were to butt them up against the edge of the bed, that would be making my panel go higher. Um, it's already too high for me to reach, so I don't want it higher. The other reason for me and having the space between the panel and the bed is, I just like to plant in that space. For me, it's easier to amend. Um, it's easier to tear things up. I don't have to reach all the way across the bed or through the panel, um, but you could do it however you want. It really doesn't matter. You can plant on the outside, the inside. Uh, I, I will tell you, I don't plant on both sides because it's gonna grow up this. I live in a really humid place. Airflow is really important for us. So I, I can't make both sides share this same panel um, because that would be a little too crowded, but you can do whatever you want. It probably will be fine. Another thing, since I know I'm going to get asked, this is also something that probably isn't going to apply to most of your gardens. Um, I'm, a, I'm a gardener, I'm a homesteader, I'm also a content creator, and a mom to a lot of kids, which means I have three full-time jobs. And the homestead and the garden takes a lot of time. Being a mom, I've got five sons at home. I've got one son that's graduating this year. If you have gone through that process, you understand how incredibly time consuming it is and how you don't want to miss anything. I mean, like I'm kind of at the place with my kids with one child that my, my boy that made me a mama graduating, um, my stepdaughter Malia is a freshman in college. So we are acutely aware of how fast it goes by and then our baby is nine, which means I've got less than 10 more years. Prioritizing being available for them is another full-time job. Content creation, very much a full-time job. I spend 40 hours a week working for sure. So a lot of, there's a lot of overlap in that, like doing one of the jobs sometimes covers one of the other ones. Um, I have an employee, Will, he works here. He works here four days out of the week and gets a lot of stuff done. And I get questions about that and comments which a lot of times are making assumptions. So I explain things. These pink flags, when you see little flags in the garden, that's Will and I communicating with each other. So Will was doing some amending and got some spaces ready to sew. He stuck the pink flags in to say, hey, these spaces are ready to sew. Sometimes he'll put flags in to say, I've already sewn these spaces. I'm writing on these flags what I sewed in those spaces so Will knows they're already sewn. Um, because we do work in the same space but a lot of times they're not working out here with each other, you know, like 
a lot of times during the day when he's here is when I am doing things for my kids or doing things for my other jobs. I spend more garden time early in the morning or late in the evening out here, so I'm by myself. And we've just come up with these little methods to kind of signal to each other what's going on so that we are not accidentally working in the same spaces and like double doing things essentially. Sometimes it's obvious and it doesn't have to be communicated. I mean like when I'm sowing plants, I'm transplanting things it's obvious he knows what I've done but when it comes to seed starting that's one of the things that because you know we'll just fail to communicate something we'll end up both putting seeds in the same space or both amending the same space sometimes it's obvious that it's amended but sometimes it's not and um, that's just one of our little things that we do to, to let each other know what's going on in the garden all right now on this side I am going to do some Armenian yard long cucumbers so this cucumber is not a cucumber it's a melon um if you have seen them there they, there's also a green and white striped variety i've grown both of them i actually prefer the white one i have learned the green one is furry like it has like <laughs> because okay a lot of young melons are whenever they're first coming up they're like kind of furry feeling and for a melon, it doesn't matter because you're gonna wait until it gets big and like ripe to pick it as a melon. But when you're trying to grow it to eat young, like a cucumber, you, I don't I don't dig the furry. It was, you could rub it off, like you could kind of like clean it real well and a lot of that furriness would come off of it. But I wasn't a big fan of that. Maybe it was just the batch I got, maybe, maybe the seeds I got, I don't know. But I like the white one, they're much more, smooth from the beginning these melons when you leave them on get about this big and they're actually edible I learned some years ago because I had some that I had missed that got really big and I ended up taking them scooping the seeds out and scooping the flesh out and blending it with um, honey and a little bit of cream and I want to say I played around with vanilla extract in it this has been years ago and I froze it into popsicles so it was like this frozen melony creamy yogurty tasting um, popsicles I did yogurt with one of them for sure anyway they don't taste like much the melon itself doesn't taste like much I would say if it had one flavor note it would just be that it was very refreshing but it doesn't taste strongly of any sweetness or even any like cucumber flavor it's just kind of melon texture that is kind of light, very mild, but not really strong. So it went well to mixing with something like yogurt and honey um, and making those popsicles. Those were great. However, I would say the Armenian yard long melon cucumber, they're known as cucumbers because that's what people grow them for. It is better as a cucumber. And slicing it, eating it with salt, um, eating it in salad. I pickled a lot of them. I really like it. It's a cool novelty. It grows really well. I'm not going to plant the whole trellis. I'm just going to do one side to have two to three plants on one side. Either way, they'd probably produce pretty well. Um, but I'm not looking to grow just tons of those just because I don't have an application where I need tons of them. I'd actually considered moving this little teepee trellis this year to a different place just to mix the garden up. However, I've started to notice that I'm getting several volunteer cucamelons. That's what was here last year. I mean, I have quite a few coming up. I'm guessing that's what those are. Actually, if I move this mulch out of the way, they might have a better chance. Oh yeah, I got lots of seedlings popping up in here. So I will actually change my garden plan to accommodate volunteer plants. Here's why. Volunteer plants are essentially the survivors. You can grow seeds that come from all over the place. But seeds that are acclimated to your region are going to do better. They're going to be more resistant uh, to disease, to pests. It's not a deal breaker. Like I get seeds from all over. I am pretty non-discriminatory in what seeds I will grow. If it's something that can thrive and survive my region, I'll give it a try. But um, I have found that seeds that I either saved from my garden um, that volunteered in my garden or that were developed in gardens near mine. So like local heirlooms 
they just do better. Now, I'm not prepared to give up the variety that I get from getting seeds from all over the country and even all over the world. It's totally worth it for me, even if I do know that some of the things I'm growing may succumb to disease sooner. But when it comes to stuff like this, like these cucumelons that are volunteering here, I'm just going to leave this TP trellis and I'm going to let them grow in this space because they're just going to be healthier and hardier. They're going to be established sooner rather than me sowing seeds right now. I've already got seedlings that are this tall that are coming up. And it's worth it to me to change my plans to let that happen because ultimately it's going to be better for me. Oh wow, this happened fast. I've got squash babies coming up. Happy birthday, little guys. Um, they're looking a little yellowy around the edges. They must have just popped up. Probably a cool night last night for them. Um, trying to decide. I may go ahead and do the cut potato thing in this bed just to protect these seedlings because I have seen lots of little pill bugs. And if we have a replay from last year, Oh, look at that just popping out of the soil. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, look at this. I was just walking back. I gotta run and go get my kids. This is my Gamecock iris. It's like a really rich purple. Looks almost black with a little yellow stripe. This is a Japanese iris, not a bearded one. So they bloom a little later. And they really love the water, which is why we've got them around the fountain. Because this fountain splashes out. That's really cool. That's the first one to start opening up. But several of them are budding. I really just picked that one for the name because being here, we live 45 minutes from Columbia and the University of South Carolina is here, which is the Gamecocks. And so when I saw that one was called Gamecock, I had to get it. They're opening today. Tomorrow, my son Jackson has his academic signing day at school where he like acknowledges the fact that he is going to the University of South Carolina this fall. Um, he's already enrolled in all of that stuff. He's going to be staying there in a dorm. And man, we're coming into May. Like, it is almost his graduation month. And I am just, there's a lot to that. <laughs> if you have been through it before, you understand. But there is a lot of emotion and feeling to your child, like, graduating high school and making big next step moves. I'm okay. But, like, I am definitely having to process a lot. It's not a it's not a small thing at all. All right, y'all. It's evening. <laughs> I'm actually headed back out here to do a little bit more gardening, but I edited the first part of this video first. Okay. I seriously thought so I usually have like a running idea of how long the video is that I'm filming. I know how much footage I have. And in my mind, I'd only shot like 5 minutes worth of footage. And I just got done editing like 22 minutes worth of video. So that just tells you how much I genuinely do lose complete track of time while I'm working in my garden. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.